Today's video is supported by Flying Eyes. I'll tell you more about them later in the show. Let's crank a tiny little wheelie here. Let's get her wide open, right? Let's do the old Italian tune-up. I literally never take it out to red line. <laughs> It's just like, it feels bad doing that on this bike. <laughs> well, look who it is! It's the Desert Sled. You guys haven't seen this bike in a minute. I have not really gotten the chance to ride this thing around very much. Um, mostly because I was very frustrated with its master cylinder and then also because uh, I've obviously had the Husky 501, uh, FE 501 which has been my pride and joy for the past six months or so. But uh, I wanted to take the Desert Sled out for a ride, man. It's been too long. Update you guys on what's going on with this bike, if I have any plans for it, and uh, what else the deal is with this motorcycle. Um, this one's going to be a relaxed, weekend-style, old-school vlog. So sit back, relax, grab yourself a little popcorn or a cup of coffee. We're going to hang out for a little bit. Um, but I did want to point out that I did do this upgrade to this bike. Um, I've been rolling around on this new RCS-15 master cylinder. And this was a real thing to install this uh, master cylinder on this bike. As far as I know from the forum research that I did, I am the only person to have done this modification on a Scrambler. I looked everywhere. I looked on Ducati forums. I looked on Scrambler forums. I looked on a bunch of other guys that did other forums like that too. Um, is this guy calling the cops on me over here? What's this guy doing? He's just standing around on his phone. That's weird. Anyways. Yeah, I looked around, looked everywhere, and I'm pretty sure I'm the only person to have um, done this modification on this bike. I saw one guy in the forum was doing like a race build, but he never completed the forum posting, and so we don't know if he actually succeeded or not. But uh, yeah, so the old Nasser cylinder used to pump out fluid this way, and the, the line would actually go from here all the way out to here, all the way out to this single caliper over here. So the RCS-15, obviously way better master cylinder, um, in fact, actually, the old line actually used to go back over this way to the ABS line and back here. I've deleted the front ABS system on this bike now. So this new system uh, is a much better master cylinder. Fluid's coming out of the bottom here, pushing out this way, following the old stock routing, clipping the throttle cables right here to it, and it seems to work pretty well. I've got lots of slack in the line. It's not as tightly packaged as I would have liked, but I think all things considered, it's a pretty good little system. Uh, I've already tested it doing some wheelies and some jumps, and it seems to hold just fine with the forks uh, extending all the way. I had to then also uh, hot glue the uh, brake light switch here so that I can still have uh, some brake lights, as you guys can see right there. Otherwise, that would not be good to not have brake lights. So, really excited to take this thing out a little bit, ride it around, enjoy it, kind of update you guys on what's going on with it, and why I still love this bike three years later after owning it. Can you believe it? It's been three years that I've had this thing. We're out here on some of my favorite little twisty roads in the back of West Lake near Austin. It's a perfect little spot for a scrambler. Ah. <sighs> This bike's still such a joy to ride. Now that I don't use it for basically any off-roading, although I'm gonna get into why I might still do some off-roading with it, um, it's so nice as like a street bike because it's got all the suspension travel, and now, oh, this master cylinder feels so good on this thing. Such progressive feel, so much more direct. Oh, it feels amazing. Um, I cannot express to you, if, if, if some of you guys out there own a desert sled, you will know how just absolutely squishy soft the uh, OG master cylinder is on this bike. It's so bad, even from factory. I was like, how can it be this bad? <laughs> and I always wanted to change it, but I assumed that they did it that way because it was uh, an off-roady kind of bike and designed for kind of entry-level riders uh, to dirt. And so they thought that they were like, oh, it needs like softer front brakes. But you know, if you're riding well off-road, you don't really need the front brakes that much. Um, you could just tap the rear and use engine braking and pretty much get it done. But now, oh man, like this thing, I love the RCS-15. I've got an RCS-19 on my race bike that is like the best modification I ever did to that motorcycle. And I've just been really big on master cylinder upgrades as a, as a point of pride lately. Uh, it's just such a nice thing you can do for your motorcycle. But oh, I love this air-cooled two-valve Desmo engine. Such a rewarding motor to ring out 
and only 75 horsepower so you get to actually use the thing a lot on the street you get to wide open the sucker a whole bunch <laughs> so what's going on with me in the sled well as i mentioned i'm riding a husky 501 a lot nowadays uh like that's basically my my weekend ride uh, most of the time uh, if I'm not out on track with the Daytona I'm typically riding the FE 501 on some trails or I'm riding my motocross bike on track so I haven't really really gotten the chance to ride this thing on street very much um, just because I don't do a lot of street riding in general nowadays but it's still a blast to ride I still really enjoy it let's crank a tiny little wheelie here Flying Eyes is the proud sponsor of today's video. Do you ride with sunglasses? They're a great solution for those of you who are doing lawn days in the saddle or a commuter that leaves early in the morning light needs a clear visor only to then need sunglasses in the afternoon while riding. Flying Eyes is a perfect solution. They were originally developed for pilots to use while wearing their headsets, but they work phenomenally well for motorcyclists. The glasses are made from resilamides, an uncommon aerospace polymer which allows the frames to be unbelievably thin and light while virtually unbreakable. So forget the idea that great sunglasses are heavy and bulky. Join the new movement of crazy strong lightweight sunglasses that will work in any environment. Our team trusts Flying Eyes to be comfortable, protect our eyes, and to work great on the bike. Check them out on shop.yamanube.com. Co. Hit the link down below and buy them direct off of our store. I promise you, you won't regret that purchase. Again, go to shop.yamanube.co using the link in the description to find your perfect pair of flying eye sunglasses. Just a little one got the corner coming and a car next to us, so just a little baby wheelie for you folks. Yeah, this is a great motorcycle. I still love it. <laughs> it's still really fun to chuck through some twisties. But yeah, I don't get the chance to ride it very much anymore. I still want to do some nice long... Uh, day rides on it. It's kind of what I'm doing today. I'm just bringing you guys along for the first kind of part of it But overall, I really want to get this thing out on like a nice three-hour ride today Maybe do 150 miles or so 120 something like that I just really enjoyed the thing. Oh that master cylinder feels so good folks <laughs> That's awesome I find myself using the brakes more just because I want to feel it. <laughs> oh my god. Remind me again how awesome this upgrade was Oh, it's buttery nice buttery nice but my plans for this bike, man, I've kind of gone back and forth with this thing. There, there was a time where I was like, oh, I'm gonna put like sticky tires on it and send it at the track. And there are other times where I was like, no, I wanna build it into like a capable, proper adventure motorcycle. Adventure riding is so funny. I, it's really my least favorite discipline of motorcycle riding. I don't really love it, but I feel like it's like an abusive spouse or something. You just keep coming back to it for some reason, even though you keep getting hurt and banged up and messed up. Um, and so right now, my current inclination is to get this thing on some 21s and 18s, 21 up front, 18 out back, and uh, some slightly knobbier tires than these Pirelli Rally Scorpions, and see what she'll kind of do, you know? Uh, I'd love to do some suspension upgrades as well, uh, and furthermore, beyond just little farkles and modifications, I actually have to uh, probably replace the clutch on this thing sooner rather than later um, it is slipping a little bit due to three years worth of wheelies it's sitting at about 10,000 ish miles I think so yeah does need to get the clutch replaced there are definitely things I need to just fix on this machine before I you know actually go and try to upgrade stuff on it but I think it'll add to the experience on this bike getting some uh, stiffer front forks on it some some higher quality valving putting the 21 on it, getting the 18, extending the, uh, the axle point a little bit for the, and making it a little bit longer, I think. Um, there's a guy called Jordan Graham that I follow on Instagram that I've, I've followed him for forever because he uh, races uh, a desert sled and all these like really long distance desert races. And his build is so sweet with that bike, man. He's done it with Fast House and like actually with Factory Ducati and all this really cool stuff. And his bike is super, super nice. Um, and that's kind of like my benchmark for the kind of desert sled that I would want. Uh, just that 2118 setup, a bit more beefy front suspension. Uh, the rear shock definitely could use a little bit of help too. And then just fixing the clutch and then I think that's it. And I could still ride it around on street. It's still totally fine. Like it'd basically be like a naked uh, Tenere 700 uh, Touareg 660 style motorcycle. A um, little, little bit, uh, not as nice of a chassis and I take a teensy bit heavier roughly um but it's still be usable on the street 
and then whenever I, if I want to, chuck it down off-road or maybe do another big adventure with it, uh, it'll totally do it. Because I'm never going to rule out doing another big trip. Like in 2019, I rode this thing from Austin all the way down to Galeana, Mexico. Uh, and I did a bunch of off-road riding with it there. And boy, it was not easy. Uh, but I did have a lot of fun. Um, I actually had an off there where I came off the bike and I hit my shoe and, or my foot and my boot so hard that my toe actually now points a new direction, which is <laughs> really fun. But... I mean, I'm not going to rule out stuff like that with this machine. I, I still think this is a pretty capable long-distance bike. Um, you know, it's not a freaking Goldwing, but I don't really care. Uh, <laughs> I, I rode it for 600 miles straight from Galeana back to Austin in one day in cold and wet and mixed conditions in November. Uh, so, yeah, I think it's still definitely a capable bike for those things. For longer distances, something like the Husky 501 just doesn't work. That bike is really reserved for me. Like, I'll take it up here, and I'll go to Emma Long uh, Park out here, which is a really gnarly little enduro area that we have. Uh, I just take it out to Spokes Trails as well. Uh, I really want to get out to Hidden Falls. I haven't done that yet. Um, so it's this bike where you can, you can kind of, like, jump out of your house and ride, like, 30 minutes if you need to to get to some trails, or it's really best in a truck and take it to location, have fun, and come back in your comfortable truck as well. Whereas the Desert Sled is more of, like, yeah, I want to do a long distance thing. I want to do a little bit more mileage. It's very comfortable. The seat is super comfy on this thing. Um, and it's still a bike that I love dearly and I don't ever really want to get rid of it. Um, I've, I've contemplated selling it. I've never put it up for sale. I've contemplated it. And then I sit on it for about a day or two and I'm like, no, like, I know that it's kind of annoying, like kind of being the, uh, the, <laughs> what's the word, the shepherd for five different motorcycles that I own. Like, I, I personally own five motorcycles. So it's kind of, you know, it can be kind of annoying keeping up with all the maintenance and the changes and the washings and the and the fixes and the upgrades on five different bikes. Uh, but I, I can't bring myself to sell this thing. I really fell in love with this bike when I bought it in 2019, and it's been nothing but good times since. And I really miss riding it. I'm so happy that I'm going to do this nice big day ride on it because um, it'll still it'll still put such a smile on my face, man. It's so much fun to ride. I love the exhaust that this thing has. You just get that rowdy, raucous Ducati L-Twin two-valve engine. It's so nice. It's got such a great torque characteristic to it. really punches nice and hard down low. Um, great rumble off idle, too. Really, really nice engine. Um, and, yeah, I just I have a lot of memories with this thing. I, I have a lot of time spent in the saddle with it um it's it's just i love this bike i don't think i ever want to get rid of it flicking it through some light twisties here i was always surprised at how well this bike behaves side to side for being a scrambler for being like the way it is it actually does super well and i love the way the front end feels now with this master cylinder you can get so much power with so little effort on the uh on the pull on the lever it's so nice like you're coming right here i'm barely tapping and i'm slowing down that's so nice that's how i like to ride i don't like a bunch of squish and slop in my lever i like a really nice firm tight lever that i can pull and then i get my braking distance done i'm sure many of you are asking oh come on yan let's let's see a let's see a toprak resgat leoglu style stoppy on the sled <laughs> i am not that good <laughs> I am a decent rider, but I cannot pull awesome stoppies uh, with the sled. I definitely want to try now, though. I can pop up the rear wheel, but I can't really, you know, like roll these crazy stoppies. Uh, but it has been a skill I wanted to learn, and yeah, I got no excuse now, I guess. <laughs> I got a ridiculous, really powerful master cylinder on this bike, so I guess I got to learn stoppies with it. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is going to be such a fun morning ride. I wish I could take you guys along for the whole thing, but it's going to be a good three hours, so uh, that would be a ridiculous video. <laughs> but I don't know. Let me know if you want to see a freaking three-hour moto vlog. That sounds uh, really awful to watch. <laughs> Not consumable content. And you guys know, I like making that consumable, sweet, sweet content. You can just gobble up and eat with your friends, with your family maybe solo by yourself. I'm not, I'm not gonna judge. You can, you can eat content solo, no problem with me. I know a lot of you watch in the bathroom at work too. That's a thing. Oh, 
beautiful bike, dude. <laughs> it's also a little vain, but I do love the way this bike looks. This is like my preferred color combination on a motorcycle. White, red, black. I love that look with it. And I do notice it gets more looks than the other bikes I ride around town. Like my Husky, does, nobody looks at my Husky unless they're like, I've seen it before. If it's like a dude in a Tacoma that's like kind of lifted with some tires and stuff, they'll look, they'll be like, oh, nice. Like nice dirt bike, dude. Nice off-road vehicle, bro. Do you go, do you go like long distance touring with that thing? Did you take it to Moab, bro? Um, I've noticed that, but this bike has mass appeal. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful machine. And I think it's going to age so beautifully too. It's such a classic looking motorcycle. I don't think it'll ever look bad because it already looks kind of old school and retro and we've kind of decided that's a cool look for a bike so it ought to look just fine but yeah i'm definitely a fan of keeping certain bikes for a, a longer period of time there's some bikes that you really shouldn't get rid of and you can just keep enjoying them as long as you take care of them they'll take care of you i really believe i know some people think that ducatis are unreliable but guys this engine has never given me a single hiccup or weird problem i've serviced it correctly done the desmos when i needed to uh, kept it in check, did everything. Um, it's It's been nothing but reliable. The only thing I've had done is change the battery on it. That's it. Let's get it wide open, right? Let's do the old Italian tune-up. <laughs> I literally never take it out to redline. <laughs> it's just like, it feels bad doing that on this bike. <laughs> It lives between four and 8,000 RPM, baby. It's beautiful in that range, beautiful. Well guys, I think that is gonna wrap up this here desert sled vlog. Just wanted to give you guys a quick update on the machine, how she's doing. Feeling great with this new master cylinder. Might be doing a little 2118 setup on it in the future. Definitely gotta get the clutch fixed at some point. It's slipping a little bit, but uh, yeah. Let me know what you think. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. See you later.